Breaking news from Barcelona, Carlos Sainz is rejoining the Red Bull team after striking a 55k deal to welcome him back to the Red Bull family after they fell out with Brown after their successful season last year. Our other breaking news of the hour is that Brown after the success of Red Bull with the fight behind the scenes has spoken very publicly about how he was treated at Red Bull has decided to join the Rising Williams on what reports to be a 64k deal. He hopes the Williams can take him to greater heights but it's going to be difficult especially when the engine gave up on the second day of testing. The second day of testing was topped by Valtteri Bottas in the Alfa Romeo. This season saw Ferrari retain their driver line of Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen. Alfa Romeo followed suit, keeping Sebastian Vettel and Valtteri Bottas, who completed the most number of laps out of anyone in the test. Despite rumours that Mercedes wanted Giovinazzi out and Brown in, Mercedes keep at the Italian alongside Lewis Hamilton, who was going for his seventh title after a failed attempt last year but they look off the pace but are the German giants just sandbagging? Carlos Sainz has been on it straight away at Red Bull and already outpacing teammate Gasly something the Frenchman had way too often last year but the Red Bull team have made it very clear that Pierre is the clear number one driver Haas have kept the same driver lineup for the fifth year in a row after they were unable to get transfer target Giovinazzi on board. They look to be way off the pace and needs to improve quickly if they look to be competitive in 2021. It was rumoured that Lando Norris was moving away from McLaren to Red Bull after he wanted to trigger a performance clause in his contract after he felt he was outperforming the car and teammate Hulkenberg but the young Brit was forced to stay which means McLaren keep the same driver lineup since mid 2019 and with a car that topped at the final day of testing Will Lando be tempted to stay. Renault made it very clear that they were not happy with Ricardo's performance last year but have given him a single year contract to let him prove what he can do. With Brown moving to Williams to make an all British lineup. Williams have completely dropped Robert Kubica from the team. However, the Polish man announced that he will be reserve driver for Renault. The Williams is looking quick when it's not breaking down on the drivers. We will have to wait to Melbourne to see what the car is really like over a race distance. Alex Albon was left frustrated after Red Bull decided not to promote him after his good campaign last year but it has, it has left the Thai driver even more determined to get that Red Bull seat and outperform the teammate Lucas Weber. Racing point, no they are lucky to have the same driver lineup as it was rumoured that Sergio Perez had signed for a return to McLaren before the transfer talks broke down at the very end. Perry is left frustrated with the racing point car being more than one second off the pace of the rest of the field but that is the grid of the 2021 season with just two weeks to go till Melbourne we'll see you on the grid. So this is the grid for the 2021 Australian Grand Prix. It's Ferrari 1-2 of Leclerc just beating teammate Verstappen to pole. Bottas proves that the Alpha has got pace by starting P3 with Lewis Hamilton P4 in the Mercedes. Nico Hulkenberg had a very good qualifying for McLaren, just edging out Red Bull's Carlos side. P7 is the other Red Bull driver of Pig Gasly with Antonio Giovinazzi P8. It is an all British fifth row to round out the top 10. Lando Norris ahead of George Russell. Just outside the top 10 is Daniel Ricciardo and last year's pole sitter Sebastian Vettel. P12 and with Sergio Perez beating Stroll. It's Lucas Weber 15th for Toro Rosso with Roman Grosjean P16. 
despite winter testing, Alex Albon struggled to put any lap together yesterday. Devin Butler is P18. On the final row of the grid is Magnussen, concluding a tough weekend for Haas. And the last and 20th is Brown, who looks way down on teammate Russell. Without further ado, let's get into the Australian Grand Prix. Hi guys, Brown here and welcome back to another video here today for the start of Season 3 for my F1 2019 career mode. We're back in Australia, we've moved to Williams, there's a lot to talk about. I really hope you enjoyed the kind of the intros with the, um, the pre-season and then the grid. I'll leave a link to who actually made the, the grid sequence in the description below. Make sure to check it out because it is very, very, very cool. Please like and subscribe because I put a lot of time into this video. Do all, all of the winter testing stuff and then to do the grid sequence that took a lot of time as well. And it, that's enough rambling. Let's get into the start of this race. Let's get into the five replies. So for the start of this 2021 season, it's lights out. And away we're going, two Ferraris getting away well, Verstappen though, not really getting a good start, Hamilton or trying to get past him, as Valtteri Bottas tries to go round the outside there, we've gone round the outside, several cars, we've already got past Kevin Magnussen and Sergio Perez, he's gone wheel to wheel with the Aussie, yeah. Daniel Ricciardo, his home Grand Prix, we've gone very, very deep into turn three, and just tried to go round the outside as many cars as we could, We've got Sergio Perry on the outside there. And now let's just see what we can do. Can we get after the Aussie in his home Grand Prix? Um, Renault wanting him gone. They've given him an extra season. We'll have to see what he can do this year. We'll keep an eye on him. As everyone's flying through, we try to go down the inside of Daniel Ricciardo. That doesn't work. There's contact there. And now we're left drag racing Sergio Perez through the quick chicane we've hit the bollard and somehow we've stayed ahead of Sergio Perez there in the racing points heading through the final sector this is a replay of what happened with Ricardo who went very late I probably should have backed out of it but the contact was more of the curb than Ricardo himself skipping on though to lap two down the inside goes Sergio Perez on us and we're not going to be able to defend him and that is going to be the kind of position to him and now we're left defending Devon Butler into turn 3 we defend to the outside somehow it's now skipping on and we make contact with Devon Butler there downing inside he tries to go we defend to the outside again now though heading down towards the quick chicane Devon Butler's going to get a run on us in the Renault and he's going to try and go to the inside of us down the inside he's got the job done we're going to hang it around though and we're going to make contact and Devon Butler's off into the gravel we're spun and are facing the wrong way and pretty good everyone else we have to spin back round to get going again this is a replay of what happened and you can't really see a lot from that particular camera angle but looking back in just a second you'll see Devon Butler has to drag himself out of the gravel and to be honest we've done quite well we've done three seasons well two seasons without contact with Butler and here in season three there's the contact we just clip his rear tyre rear tyre to side pod it was never going to end well this is it from our perspective I tried to squeeze him a little bit because I was going to end up taking a really tight line for that corner and he just turned it on us and then there's the contact but he's thought it is let me know in the comments below and see what you guys think this is the view from behind so there's the contact spun around completely it was actually quite a dramatic spin as well this is the look from Lucas Weber's point of view from that angle it, it looks 50-50 but let me know in the comments down below so now skipping on to lap 3 Devon Butler's caught the back of us again didn't take him long literally just a couple of corners but this time he's going to go down our inside he's going to get past us cleanly 
we try and do the switch back I don't know why I thought that would work probably would have been better off just trying to hang it around the outside but now he's pulled a small gap and let's see what we can do can we catch him again we'll just have to wait and see um, it's good to know that I have been struggling so much in this race literally so much I can't put it into words but you can see they're going through Leclerc leads from his teammate still and on to lap 5 now and we actually hit the wall you can see it there and our front wing now is actually yellow so that's something to think about whilst that was happening this was also happening the two Toro Rosso's going wheel to wheel Albon getting past Lucas Weber for what he wants to outperform he needs to get those moves done skipping on though to lap six and Daniel Ricciardo is going to retire from his home Grand Prix something has gone his engine or just the control unit and he is out of his home Grand Prix and is that an omen for Renault this season that they're not very reliable but here we see Roman Grosjean do an excellent move all the way around the outside of Alex Albon it's a great move by the Frenchman um, wouldn't be surprised if he tried to con the FIA saying like he loves to do that there was something wrong with it but we we'll see on to lap 10 though and we are into the pits because I physically couldn't drive with this front wing anymore I was under steering everywhere the car literally felt like an actual boat in the corners so we're going to go into the hard tyres um, we're going to try and get them to the end they're going to fit a new front wing as well and let's just see what we can do from here on out in this race now though onto the end of lap 11 and into the pits comes Max Verstappen it's good to note though that Charles Leclerc pitted the lap before and Max Verstappen got held up by several cars and coming into the pits he's actually lost out to Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton he's only just beaten out Carlos Sainz there and now heading through Charles Leclerc retains the lead and Pierre Gasly is going to beat out Max Verstappen as well absolute shocker for the Ferrari driver in the pits he's lost three positions but on to lap 16 and I decided to make the decision that we are going to come into the pits to retire to save the gearbox save the engine save the components there's still 20 rounds to go remember after this one we weren't going anywhere so I thought that's best to retire and come back strong for Bahrain. So, another excellent win from Ferrari. Talk to me, Alex. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. Here come our winners now. A thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. So that is your 2021 Australian Grand Prix not the way I, I wanted it to go from my perspective especially with moving to Williams and just wanting a clean slate and it hasn't gone well but let's just talk a minute about Max Verstappen when we last saw him in this race he was down to what like P5 and he's pulled it back through and he's won this race a fair play to him and Leclerc, something's happened to him. Um, in terms of the constructors, it's now a 35 point lead for Ferrari. Let's go talk to Claire. Judging from today's race, it must be pretty hard to fend off Devon when he wants to pass. You're an actual fraud, Claire. You're an actual fraud. Go away. Are you missing your old team? 
am I? No, I'm not. <laughs> Did you not see how they treated me last year? They went off, off me a new contract. It was literally the worst contract ever. They still didn't like it. Back into the paddock and we're losing the rivalries. We've got Peter Gasly um, somehow. I'm guessing that's because he was our teammate at Red Bull. So it's just auto selected him as our new rival. I wouldn't give it to Gasly because now it's going to be harder for me to beat him but we'll just have to wait and see we're going to be doing two upgrades on the engine side but it's worth mentioning you'll see here that we actually are well are good in the engine department but Williams did a lot of upgrades over the winter and we actually have the best car by quite a margin which makes that race in Australia that little bit more kind of annoying especially with George Russell qualifying all the way down in 10th in clearly the downforce and the aero isn't there on the car yet for tracks like Australia but if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit the like button if you're new around here and you like these kind of videos make sure to subscribe and hit the bell as well so you know when I upload but until the next one in Bahrain goodbye <laughs>